Hi guys, my name is Claire, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to tether your Sony camera all the way over to Lightroom on your computer. Now, this process can be a little tricky, but don't worry, I'm going to show you all the steps you'll need to make, and we'll get you hooked up and shooting tethered in no time. All right guys, before we get started, first let's go over everything that we'll need. So, make sure you have your Sony camera, mine's the Sony a7 III, uh, full battery charge ready to go. Make sure you have your tethering cable. Mine's from Tether Tools. You're gonna need your computer with Adobe Lightroom, you know, already installed. Uh, and the final thing that we're going to need is some software from Sony. It's called the Imaging Edge Desktop Software. You can get it online, it's free. I will leave a link down below where you can access it and download it yourself. Yeah, it's necessary because unfortunately, our Sony cameras are not able to directly communicate to Lightroom. They need an intermediary kind of stepping stone software and that's what Sony's Imaging Edge does. So again, I'll leave the link down here, give it a click, download whichever, you know, <laughs> one you need. In the meantime, there's a few things that we need to actually change on our Sony cameras. So grab your camera, turn it on, and head over to your menu by clicking the menu button. Now looking at the top, you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way over to page setup four. For my Sony a7 III, it's page four out of seven on the setup options. And you're going to want to click down until you see USB connection highlighted. Give that a click and a new box is going to pop up. You're going to see auto, mass storage, MTP, and PC remote. You're going to want to click PC remote. Okay, so that should be everything with our cameras for now. So go ahead and set your camera down and let's head over back to our computers. Hopefully by now your software has downloaded, but before we open it up, there are two things that we need to do first. So for some bizarre reason, the Sony software does not work when Dropbox is open or Lightroom for that matter. I know we're going to be using Lightroom very, very, very soon, but for now, just close it quit the program and quit Dropbox if you happen to be a Dropbox user, because like I said, it just doesn't work. Quit Dropbox, quit Lightroom, and just basically close anything else you might have running just to be safe. Next, after you've closed all these programs, it's time to tether it up. So grab your tethering cable and hook up your camera to your computer. Mine goes into the USB port, so let's see. Plug one in there. My cable's really long for, for this right now. And the other end of my tether cable goes into my camera right there. Just let this hang for now. All right, and check your connections. Cool, looking good. So. I'm gonna turn my camera on and take off my screen protector. And now is the moment where we open up the remote software. So go ahead, click remote, click start, and a small box should pop up. And under model name, you should be able to see your camera's model name. Mine is ILCE something and I can see the connection says USB. So if for some reason your camera model isn't popping up and you don't see your camera, you know, being acknowledged here in the remote box, uh, don't fret, give the refresh button a click and give the software a second chance to, you know, detect your camera. And your camera should say connecting dot 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 USB on the little screen. Next, I'm going to double click my camera and it should say connecting, waiting for a response from the camera. And within a few seconds, the program opens. And <laughs> now on the remote software, I can see everything that my camera sees, which happens to be my window. Look, can you see my window? That's my window. All right, so if you happen to see on your computer screen what your lens sees, that means that you are successfully tethered to the remote software. It's great. So 
Right here in the program, I basically have a live view, like I said, of everything my lens sees. Uh, this remote program is pretty darn cool and useful. I definitely suggest taking some time to get to know it yourself, simply because there's so many different features and things you can do. I really like how you can change the shutter speed and your aperture straight through the program itself without even having to touch your camera. It's really convenient. Now, we're not out of the woods yet. The next step is to organize our files. So when we're photographing, we most likely have tons and tons and tons and tons of pictures that we're taking, right? At least that's how it goes for me. And I like to stay as organized as possible. So every time I bust out my camera to shoot something, I create a new folder so that everything stays, you know, within its own little space. So for this instance, I've created a fake folder and I've called it <laughs> YouTube Tether. Very original. So I've created a new folder to show you guys. This is where all of my hypothetical images from this tethering are going to go. And we're going to basically connect this folder with the remote software. And we're going to do that by going all the way over to the right column of the remote software. If you look down towards the bottom right corner, you're going to see a section titled Save Settings. Then you're going to see right beneath that a little drop down box titled Save In. And it could be any folder, you know, that automatically filled in there for you right now whatever your default settings are. But uh, to the right of that, you'll see a little tiny box. Go ahead, click that. It'll open up, uh, you know, options for you to choose whatever folder you want as your destination for your images. So go ahead and input that. You will want to double check that you see it now um, right to the left on that little drop down box thingy. So again, basically, this is designating where all of your images are going to be stored. This is the destination folder. And this is very important because this is how we're going to connect it with Lightroom. So once you have your folder ready, we are ready to do perhaps the final steps, which is connecting to Lightroom. So are you ready? <laughs> okay, friends, now is the time to open Lightroom Classic. So go on, open her up, and once that opens, we're going to do some more file organization. So go all the way to the top and click File. Next, scroll down to where it says Auto Import, and when you hover over Auto Import, there will be two options that pop up to the right. One is Enable Auto Import. And this is very important. This is enabling the auto import. So you want to have this checked. Make sure it's checked. Yes, you want to enable it. And right beneath that, it says auto import settings. Go ahead, give that a click. And now a new box should pop up in the middle that says auto import settings. This is where we're going to input the destination folder that we just designated in the remote software. So we're going to actually input this folder twice. So the first place we're going to basically choose the same destination folder is where it says watched folder. And to the right of that, you'll click choose and then basically find your destination folder and click choose. And then it should pop up next as the watched folder. So the next thing we're going to change is right beneath that, you'll see destination, move to, colon. And here is where we're going to choose again, the same exact destination folder. So go ahead, click that and click choose. And that should be it here for this box. So again, to reiterate, we are choosing the same destination folder twice, both in the watch folder and in the destination move to folder. A third thing you should double check in this box is at the very tippy top, it says enable auto import. If you didn't happen to check this box like 10 seconds ago, make sure it is checked now. You want to enable auto import. So when you're finished, go ahead, click OK. And that should be the final step. Once you have basically designated your destination folder in Lightroom, as well as the remote software, it should be able to communicate now. And as you take images, 
through your camera, those photos will basically go into your destination folder and they should automatically pop up in Lightroom as you photograph. So yeah, to test it out and see if it's working, go ahead and either on the remote software, you can click you know, your shutter and take a photo or you can take a photo manually yourself on your, on your camera. Either way, you should still be able to see everything that your lens sees in the remote software and your image should automatically pop up in Lightroom Classic, which is super convenient because you can almost automatically see the image you just took, but on a much bigger screen. All right, guys, give yourself a pat on the back. That is how to set up your Sony camera and shoot tethered to Lightroom. Shooting tethered, if you haven't tried it before, it's a really, really, really great way to shoot. I personally love it for product photography, but I think it's a great tool to have for any kind of photography because ultimately you're having the option to see your images on a large screen automatically instead of relying on just like the viewfinder or the little screens on the back of our cameras. And it's also really great for setting up compositions if you're doing like an editorial scene or something like that. Uh, just having the option to see a live view of what your lens sees on this big screen, it can really, really help with, you know, just making your image as beautiful as possible. So that is everything from me about tethering and hooking this stuff up. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, give it a watch. And I really hope this helps. If you happen to have any issues and can't get your camera connected, please feel free to leave me a comment below. I'd love to help you troubleshoot and uh, figure out whatever's, you know, stopping you from shooting tethered. So again, thank you and see you next time. Bye.